hello everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. My name is Mehdi Javanbakht. I'm a health economist by training and I have been basically working in like doing economic evaluation and developing economic models for 12 years now. And uh, I have worked in different like roles and in one of my previous roles uh, in academic I was lucky to be like working as a part of ERG member, external reviewer for NICE because when all the medtech companies and pharma companies they submit their dossier, NICE will basically send those dossier to external reviewers to look at and to evaluate the, the evidence which is clinical and economic evidence and also the economic model that is built by the, the, the manufacturers because they need to, like NICE need to check it by the external reviewers and then write reports on that. So uh, basically today I'm going to talk about uh, like defining and measuring uh, the, the benefits to the patients and also uh, the payers and the healthcare system. So it is very important how now we can basically quantify all the potential benefit that we think are associated with the, the, the new technology. And I will be mainly focusing on the, the nice process, but most of these things that we are going to discuss today are applicable for other healthcare systems as well and for global marketing of uh, your technology. As Mike mentioned, there are different products, I mean, nice, and uh, some of them are, were, uh, like, are specifically look at the, the economic evidence and they, they are interested to see what is the cost implication of adapting a new technology like Medic Innovation Briefing, where NICE will basically look at all the economic evidence and also uh, MedTech guidance, you know, where you want to, to basically understand what are the, the cost consequence of the technology when they adapt it, what are the benefits in terms of for the patients and what are the benefits to, uh, to the payers and to the health systems. And then there are other programs as well, which they, uh, each of them, they has their own, basically they have their own uh, kind of uh, economic evaluation kind of type. So. Uh, currently, if, imagine if uh, for NICE, if you want to basically get recommended by NICE and get like basically reimbursed in NHS, uh, there used to be a, a separate form called uh, uh, basically MTEP notification form, which was like an offline form, board file, uh, like 15 pages. You, uh, uh, I mean, we used to fill that form for our clients and then submitting to NICE. It has changed a, bit, a little bit recently, and now it is an online, basically, form, and it requires, you know, it, uh, there are certain information that you need to put about CE mark, about the, the potential clinical benefit that you need to basically uh, feel and tell about your, basically, all the evidence, all the clinical evidence and economic evidence that you have. And this, basically, Health, uh, health Tech Connect is, is just for technologies that they are offering the measurable benefits to the, to the patient. So it is not the kind of list or catalog of all the technologies. Basically, NICE is interested in the technologies that can offer the benefit, extra benefit compared to the current treatment pathway, both to the patients and to the health system in terms of the cost savings that could happen using the te te technology or increasing the efficiency. So they are not interested in product line uh, like uh, extensions or basically iteration of existing technologies if they are not associated with extra benefits to the patients or to the basically health systems. So if you look at it that way, then yes, they are interested on the, uh, the technologies that they are offering the, the more effectiveness or the same effectiveness in lower cost or uh, basically, uh, yes. They are, so mainly in the medtech area, they are not interested much in, in cost incurring technology, but there are different programs. So for example, for deep, uh, diagnostic assessment program, you can basically be a cost incurring technology as long as you are offering more effectiveness. So if we look at that way, in, in health economics area, we have a, a cost effectiveness plane, which when you, uh, when you look at a new treatment and when you compare it to the current practice, in terms of cost and effectiveness, you could be in different quadrants here. And NICE mainly interested in this area where the new technology compared to the current practice is either uh, less, uh, less, ex less exp exp expensive or at the same cost, but it is, of course, more effective. So that is the quadrant that they like to see, and uh, when you basically, when we, when we develop the cost uh, and the economic model, it is basically, uh, you know, it's a, the link between several clinical and economic inputs, and uh, there are, and they are coming from the, all the clinical studies that uh, manufacturers have done, and also from the actual data, and then there is uncertainty about some of those input parameters that we use in the model, so by basically, 
Uh, there are some techniques in the health economics area that we can incorporate those uncertainty by doing Monte Carlo simulation. And then when we do the, our analysis and when we estimate the, the, uh, the final outcome from the economic model, we do it with using Monte Carlo simulation, which means we will have 10,000 iterations or 10,000 estimations, and then we will talk about the probability of being here. Because when you do estimate those kind of iterations, those number of times, like 10,000 times, each time could be, in, uh, could be in different locations, but the point is in what percentage of those iterations you will fall in this quadrant, which is very important because uh, in, in, in scientific work like this, we want to basically uh, see what is the probability. So back to the to benefits, we have the patients, healthcare provider, and payer. So we want to make sure that all the potential benefit uh, associated with the, uh, with the technology will be captured because they, they are very important when we are uh, developing the economic model and where we are developing the value proposition. And depending on where we are going to use that model or what is the purpose of developing that model, there are different techniques and different types of economic evaluation. And data from the patients could be from the evidence or published literature or could be even individual level data that you have from the clinical studies that you have done. We can analyze them in a way that, let's say, if it is quality of life data or if it is a survival data, we can basically analyze them and to, uh, to use to inform the model in a best way to, mo to make sure that we will basically maximize the, the benefit or we will basically quantify all the the benefit associated with the, uh, with the technology, and the same uh, about the, the cost and the, the, the resource use. So, if you look at that new form, your online form, there are certain like categories about what are the potential benefits of a new technology to, to the patient. So, uh, basically, could some technologies could basically increase the survival? That means they reduces the mortality. Uh, some of them, they are basically increasing the quality of life or preventing some complications from happening or earlier detection. All of these, it's, it's really important to, to, to make sure that we can basically translate them into uh, a, a final clinical endpoint, which is meaningful and it is easy to understand for the policymaker and decision maker. And uh, if you look at that way, uh, for example, for earlier detection, you basically you need to have a proper decision analytic model showing that, okay, if we have a diagnostic test which we can detect er the, some cases earlier, what is the benefit associated with that? Or if we have a technology which reduces some intermediate uh, clinical endpoints, let's say HbA1c in diabetes patients or blood pressure or LDL, you need to have basically, a pr uh, we need to translate this intermediate outcome to more long-term basically outcome by looking at the clinical evidence and luckily today's or nowadays there are good clinical evidence to link all these clinical evidence or intermediate clinical evidence to final endpoints which are very meaningful for decision makers. So that is the function of economic model and all of these and this is just the least but it doesn't mean that this is the only, you know, you can have other basically benefit for patients and as long as we are able to, uh, to translate them into more like meaningful uh, I mean, like in the, within the model structure to, to the final endpoints, that is, that is really good. It's good to have a clinical data from patients. That is the, the benefits of having uh, the evidence from the patients, which means what we can understand exactly what is the impact of the, that specific condition or that technology on the patient's quality of life and their preference and all the risk and uh, basically acceptability. And all the, this is, this is uh, what I'd like to always to, to have in my presentations, because all the things that we are doing in the, in the basically health system, I like to look at health system as a, like a factory. So it's a factory, we are having some like you know, material and we are producing some health. And we, we measure that health with a measure called quality adjusted life years. So all the things that we are doing, preventive, curative, rehabilitative, they are basically either providing, pr improving the quality of life of patient or health related quality of life of patients or the, the length of basically life or the survival. And when you combine these two, we can have a measure of the production or basically health benefit that is comparable between all different compa uh, basically interventions within the health system. So it is a very uh, basically good measure which makes sense and it is easily uh, can be understood by, you know, uh, health policy maker and decision maker can understand it and uh, also it is a standard uh, like measure if you want to have a publication and you, you know, so basically you know the meaning of 
quality, right? So it's a basically one year of with full quality of life or perfect quality of life. And there are certain measures that we are able to use to, to estimate the quality of life. What they recommended one is the, the EQ5D, which is very short questionnaire. Probably most of you fami are familiar with this questionnaire. It's a just five questions. It asks about different dimensions of health. And it is a recommended tec uh, like technique or measure or tool to estimate the quality of life. There are other, uh, uh, basically, tools and measures as well. Like this is a specific questionnaire. The, the, uh, the thing is you need to make sure that the, to the tool that you use is sensitive enough to capture all the potential benefit associated with your technology or the outcome that you are getting. Sometimes this, because this is a generic tool, Sometimes it may not be as sensitive as it should be to capture all the potential benefits. So for example, if you have a technology which is impacting the eye uh, or vision, let's say, or other things, there is no, like, uh, there are some, like, like you know, uh, pain or discomfort or an anxiety, you, you will capture that, but not necessarily vision-related quality of life. This is just one example of uh, how we can basically, or how important it is to, 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 to estimate or to translate some short-term or intermediate clinical in, uh, like, uh, evidence or clinical outputs for the technologies into final or final uh, output. So we have a technology called Cerebro kind of tech, uh, which basically is used to, to, to diagnose the large vessel occultation and using this technology, you will be able to basically identify the, those patients that are uh, eligible for throm uh, thrombectomy, which means you can basically physically remove the clots. And minutes are very important for these patients with a stroke who have had a stroke. So we are talking about minutes. So the time is very important. And if that technology is able to uh, reduce the, the time uh, just by 20 or 40, uh, 30 minutes, the value of this technology that can offer, because once you do this basically uh, quicker, and if you do the thrombectomy using this technology to identify the patients quickly and doing the uh, basically thrombectomy, you can have you can reduce the risk of disability or the level of disability, and this this has a long-term cost implications because if they are after a stroke, they are disabled. There is going to be ongoing costs, and these ongoing costs are basically attributable or saving of these costs are attributable to the technology. So this is just one example. And then uh, when it comes to basically benefit to the payers and to the health systems, there are different types of benefit. These are the kind of lists when you fill the health tech connect form, uh, you, you will basically kind of tick if their technology is reducing or improving any of these kind of efficiency or like uh, this uh, kind of resource use, which could be uh, length of stay, could be basically uh, readmissions or compliance or uh, the, the duration of doing that uh, procedure. So it is very important to have a better idea and in, within a model structure to, to make sure that you can, and also it depends on the perspective of the economic model, because if you are developing the model for nice submission, it is important that you capture all the, benef uh, all the cost benefit as well. But if you are doing for hospitals, there are some of them are more important because hospitals, they want to see after adapting the technology, how the efficiency can improve, how the income can increase. So things like that. And that's why we have sometimes different tools and value communication, basically tools for hospitals or for uh, nice or if it is for uh, publication, uh, basically, uh, you know, we incorporate the quality, we incorporate the, the societal perspective as well, uh, as well, which will be very helpful for your global market access because that is a scientific work. It shows uh, it has a proper decision analytic model and it is evidence based and it shows how adapting this technology could save the life and could save the money for different health systems. Thank you.